Okay, so let's go through the process of actually using the Edit Poly in order to make a specific item. So what we're going to do is make more or less a generic computer monitor. Well, obviously we'd need to choose between a flat screen or one of the old box ones, so we're going to go with more of the flat screen ones. So I'm going to go ahead and go Create, Box, and I'm just going to pull out a brand new basic box. Sizes don't really matter because we're doing this fairly organically and when I say organically that's a common term of trying to make things more free-handed and flowy as opposed to reconstructing something with specific numbers which would be closer to you know engineering. So for us we also don't need necessarily everything. Now, I do want this kind of box here in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and go 331 for this. And as far as numbers go, I will just go ahead and kind of round these off just a bit. But realistically, it doesn't really matter. We just need something that kind of feels and looks right. So I'm going to go with these numbers, 100, 60, 7, 331. And I'm going to go ahead and right-click, Convert to, Edit Poly. So now that I've created those numbers, converted it, I'm ready to go ahead and go through my selection stuff to try to go ahead and build this. Well, first off, we have a few shortcuts we can do. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the keyboard are quick changes between these. So if I go to 3, I'm at border, 2 is at edge, 4 is polygon, 1 vertex, 5 will be element, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, I'm going to go to the poly selection and choose this one here in the middle. Well, because in the long run, we would go through and we would actually UV map and do some other stuff that's going to be far above and outside of what we want to do for this basic model. So, with this one polygon selected, and I'm going to go ahead and do this fairly freehanded, I'm going to come up to scale. And with scale, I'm free to kind of just build and drag this up so I can rework this mesh just a bit. So I'm scaling up this polygon and you see it bends everything else around it. Well, that'd be, that's fine. Not a big deal. Generally speaking, there's other ways we could do this that might be a little bit better, easier, nicer. But I'm going to just take it very simply to begin with. So this polygon selected, I'm going to collapse soft selection here because I'm going to be using these tools down here for the most part. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and use bevel. Well, on the platforms, usually there's going to be some kind of slot or groove for it to sit into. So I'm just going to extrude this down just a tiny bit and let it bevel in just a bit also. Just kind of freely making those motions. From here, I can go to inset because I want to bring this in. Because if I just extrude this straight up from how it is, there's going to be a little gap here, but it's not really what I want to go for. So I'm going to go inset because I want to make a smaller polygon inside of this one. And that's roughly the same shape. So I'll do so and bring it in about this far. How far is that? Well, it is perspective-based, so looking at it a little bit different might be helpful. And if it's not quite what you want, just Control z to undo and try again. Also, if you can see on mine how it is a little bit speckly, don't worry, that's just a display issue. It's nothing to worry about. So I got this. Alright, I'm going to grab Extrude again. And I'm going to bring it up just a little ways. And this is just kind of the platform on the base that's going to hold everything. Well, once again, I'm going to inset and bring the shape in roughly about that big. Okay. I'll use the move command by pressing W to quickly switch to it. Or I can just hit the button up there. And I'll bring this backwards, grabbing that one axis. And just bring it back towards that back edge. Okay. Alright, once again I'm going to extrude up. 
and so far so good. Once again, I'm going to pull it backwards a bit. Maybe a bit more than that. And then extrude once again to bring this up further. Now, how far do I need to bring it up? Well, that's that's kind of a up to you thing. There's not an exist, exact number that we necessarily want to. But lastly, I want to do kind of the short one that's just completely flat. So, now that I have this, I can do a few other things just to kind of help this overall shape and process. Well, this might be a little thick, so I'm going to grab this vertex. And with one big bounding box, I'm going to select all of these top ones here. And you see that they're all selected. Well, selecting multiple vertexes or polygons in general is going to give you a new gizmo that kind of fits right into the middle of all of them. And because of that, we can swap over to something like scale, like we did down here. And just on the one axis here, I'm going to grab it and bring them in, just to try to narrow up this overall piece. That's about right. If I really wanted to, I could grab the edges down here and pull it in on the bottom, which, let's go ahead and just do that real quick. So choose one, hold alt, choose the second, but you will see that while it works for vertexes, it doesn't exactly work with edge. But if I hold shift and choose vertex, you'll see that it grabs all of the vertexes that were assigned with those two edges, which makes it easy to go ahead and do the same on the bottom. I do want it just a little bit wider, so I'll just narrow it just a bit. And let's go back to Polygon. So this front place here, this face is going to extrude outwards a bit, but I'm going to use Bevel to try to stretch it just a bit, because it's going to be what connects to the monitor itself. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to choose Bevel, click and drag upward, and I'm going to bring it to about here, a little over like if this is about the same size as that thickness, I'm going to bring it to about a 1.5 size. So I'll let go, bring the mouse up again, and that feels about right. Again, we're just kind of doing it organically. We're not really doing anything too special. Now I'm going to make a couple other changes. Like we saw before, I can also come up here and choose Rotate. Come back to the object grab the one axis and rotate it just a bit up and if I need to I can move it just a bit that's about right yep that's pretty good so with it rotated now every time I choose this face and I want to extrude out of it it's going to come directly out or in at that angle because for many people you don't have the screens tilted perfectly towards you face on they're usually kind of at a either downward or upward slanting angle and this is the angle I'm roughly going to have my monitor so now that I have this we're gonna do one more bevel this one this is gonna be fairly easy just bring it out a little bit and then we are going to expand it pretty heavily to about this size. And this is going to be more or less our basic monitor. Well, this is a bit square, so I might go through and stretch it down just a bit. Get that angle changed. No, I don't care for that. What I'm going to do is actually going to be this. So you will notice that this angle for the tool here, this gizmo, is not following the edge of this monitor. That's because currently our selection up here is set to view, which is related to the world axes. What we're going to do is check this and choose local, and it will change the angle of this gizmo to fit the angle of the model. So now I can evenly 
pull this down without really distorting it until it's about the size of, you know, the monitor I really want. So, pretty good. Well, once again, I'm going to choose Extrude. I'm going to bring this out just a bit. As I kind of think about my monitor, the one I have in front of me that I'm doing this on, or the ones kind of in my head, that might be a little bit much. So, back to local, making sure, choosing move, and I'm going to bring it back in towards itself just a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Well, obviously, there realistically is more to this than just a square face. Well, we need to kind of do that. And we're going to kind of ignore the rounded off edges for the moment, because we're going to fix that in a different way. But with this, I'm going to go ahead and choose Polygon. And you see I'll go back to the selection I just had. So let's go ahead and use Inset. Because there's a bit of a border around it. Yep, about like that. And then once again, I'm going to extrude inward. And I'll turn off Polygon. So with it selected, I'll press Z to just kind of zoom and focus in on it. And I can ro rotate around and see everything that's on here. Now if we want to get technical, I mean this would probably be some kind of pivot. So we would have inset on this face a bit before we beveled it out to create these polygons. But we're not going to worry too much about that for now. Not for something that's mostly just a simple placeholder object. We're not looking at perfectly detailed monitors and stuff. We're just kind of working through these basics. That said, there's other little details that we could put in here with, you know, some nice simple power buttons, buttons up the side, maybe if we want some kind of sticker, sticky notes, something like that. But for the basic monitor itself, there's not too much more that actually goes into this. That said, we can do just a bit more to it anyway. Well, right now, if I went through, come up here to hit render, I can see what it would look like. And, I mean, it's not bad, but it's, it's a little flat. Yeah. It's just real boxy. So what I'm going to do is this. On my modifier list, I'm going to hit my drop downs. I'm going to come here to chamfer. Well, what chamfer does is it will let us come in here and take all these edges and start to round them off just a little bit to try to make things look more natural. So with it theoretically looking more natural, I'll re-render. And you know, it really does just look better almost instantly. But we can fix this just a little bit more. So with segments, I have mine set to three. The more we add in there, the smoother and more edges there's going to be, but it won't necessarily show you exactly what you want in terms of seeing a huge difference. So I'm going to just leave these at a three. But what I'm going to change is this, the amount. This is more or less on a scale of how spread out you want it with a low number, or uh, with a high number, or with a low number, kind of collapse it into just those edges that it was starting to smooth off. So I'm going to put mine at about a 0.25. And if I come in here, we can see this change between these numbers. If it's too high, they're going to start crossing over each other, and that's where the meshes go badly. If it's too small, basically to zero, well, you might as well not have an edge at all. So by going in here and doing just these sharp crease edges, like this with this amount, it's going to give us a much cleaner edge on everything, but it'll look better than just a hard, sharp, squared edge. And while the detail seems very subtle, it's a big deal overall. Well, obviously, we can come through and we can throw on extra materials as we want to or anything else we need, which, if I'm going to just kind of do something 
fairly generic and simple. I can just assign a quick material to it, let it render, and now it seems a little bit more plastic and gray. I can go through, change the borders, and those are things we can talk about in the future, but for the most part, for basic modeling and poly modeling specifically, this is kind of where it all begins, which is mostly understanding the shapes, understanding how to get them, what needs to go where. Now, if we want to get very technical, I mean, down here on all of these parts, I could come in here to the edit poly before I chamfered, grab just these edges, reset this back to view, just so it's in the middle, swap to scale, and bring them in just a bit, just to kind of help the shape of things. So when I click back up here to chamfer, they still have those edges, but it does do a far better job at just kind of smoothing out their placements. Now, if we use chamfer, some other things like Turbo Smooth is not really going to help us, is it won't really have places or edges that it can smooth, because chamfer is going to do it for us. But with chamfer, we will still have plenty more options and different subtle details that are far better controlled that we can't do with something like a Turbo Smooth. But everything else in here is truly going to be based around just finding those little choices, those little details that really elevate your work, even if it seems like nothing is really going to be changing about it. But that's going to be it for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good night, guys.